Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. Um, and we are in God's Word through the small catechism. God's Word to the small catechism. Back to God's Word. Um, however you want to picture it, we're in God's Word together. So uh, thanks for joining us. We're in the six chief parts of the catechism that Martin Luther wrote. A small catechism that was really meant to be in the home of each believer to be able to teach them the, just the crux of the faith of uh, being able to say it is about the word of God alone and it produces faith and it shows you grace. Um, and within this, we even get to see that in this first six chief part. And that is the first chief part is the 10 commandments. And as we looked at that yesterday, um, looked at that last video, um, we talked about those first and second commandments and that you shall have no other gods and don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. And he, God is drawing us close saying, I'm creator, your creation, but the creator that created everything wants us to draw close. And now he also has a design for us, especially in this third commandment that's going to even draw us closer and closer to him and what he's done by grace through faith through the faithfulness of God in the sending of his son, Jesus. And as we get to see that in the third commandment, um, we're going to rest assured that it's just going to be the third commandment because I just want to speak a little bit of uh, education in and amongst the commandments of being able to see it's called the first tablet and the second tablet. The first tablet is our relationship with God and that alone. And so you shall have another gods. Don't misuse his name and remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Being as what do we do on the Sabbath? It's a, it's a day of rest, but not a day of rest of just laying on the couch, but a day of rest in God, in Christ. And so we have that rest in that relationship, knowing that God will knows our needs and wells provides. And that Sabbath is being able to say it's just that connection between once again creator and creation. So that's the first tablet, one, two, and three. Four through ten, as we're going to get to the rest of this, uh, to the rest of these videos, the next three. We're going to see that in these next six, <clears throat> excuse me, seven uh, uh, commandments, four through ten, it has everything to do with how you love your neighbor, how you actually are looking to your neighbor, looking to others. So it really does follow that first commandment and the greatest commandment that Jesus said, love God, first three commandments, and love others, four through ten. And so commandment number three. Exodus chapter 20, if you want to open up your Bibles and if you want to open up your catechisms as well, if you have that, um, we're going to be back and forth with those. Exodus chapter 20, beginning at verse 8, says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now, so if he's saying to remember the Sabbath day, they should probably have a reality of what the Sabbath day even is. And so as God formed that community, he had them pick up that manna six days out of the week, right? But on the seventh, rest. On the seventh, don't do any work. Rest because God rested on the seventh day. And so there's this connection, the creating an image of God kind of reality towards that drawing close to who God is and who his people will be. And so he's saying here in this commandment, as they're at Mount Sinai, as they've been formed as a community, remember, remember the Sabbath day. Remember the rest that we have, the provision of God that we have, the who we have as God <laughs> on this day. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Set it apart. It's not like any other day. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day it is a Sabbath to the Lord, your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. God made it holy. He set it apart for the purposes of having that connection, understanding what we need in this life. And so God built a community with the understanding of saying, remember the Sabbath day. And so as I turn to my catechism, this is what Luther wrote towards the third commandment. He says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, first and foremost, that great relationship with God, so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Hold it sacred, meaning it is set apart 
So how do you despise preaching his word? You don't come to worship. You don't, you, are, you aren't in community. You aren't hearing the word of God in that community and that design that God has put together that we're in relationships with one another, hearing the word of God to be in relationship with the creator. So what is the Sabbath day? <clears throat> it is that day of rest. So should we, it says here, does God require us to observe the Sabbath and other holy days of the Old Testament? Here's the, here's the awesome reality is, this is what his definition is. It says, the Sabbath was a sign pointing to Jesus, who is our rest, who is our rest. Our rest is not getting enough sleep. Our rest, although you should do that, um, our rest is not <clears throat> just not working on a Sunday afternoon so you can watch football and sit on the couch, although that is resting. Our rest is Jesus. And so let me say that again. The Sabbath was a sign pointing to Jesus, who is our rest. Since Jesus has come as our Savior and Lord, God no longer requires us to observe the Sabbath day and other holy days of the Old Testament. That's because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, listen to this. And this is, tells us who our rest is, what our Sabbath is. Come to me, all you who weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. How is he going to give us rest? Is he going to touch us on the head and be able to say he's going to go to sleep for a while? No. He says, come to me. Actually, we find rest and we find this sacred, set apart time is to just be with Jesus. That's in worship. That's in every day of how we labor and how we actually work. Right? It says this <clears throat> in Colossians chapter 2. Do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that are were to come. The reality, the reality, however, is found in Christ. These remain then, it says in Hebrews 4. A Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. So remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Set it apart. What does God require of us in the third commandment? Number one, we should hold preaching and the word of God sacred. Something holy, something set apart. That the word of God is not just a part of this world, just another thing that we do or prioritize, but it is our life. Number two, we should gladly hear it, learn it, and meditate upon it. So once again, the Sabbath isn't about this festival. The Sabbath is about Christ, the word of God that has become flesh, that dwells among us. And we want to gladly hear him. We want to gladly digest what he has to say to us. We want to gladly mark and learn it, meditate upon it day and night, as the Psalms say. Because in the word of God, in the truth of who God is, what he's done for us, what he's provided for us in Jesus gives us our rest. So brothers and sisters, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Your Sabbath is Jesus, what God has provided. But also our Sabbath is the body of Christ joining together to hear the word of God and celebrate the sacraments together. And so if you've been away for these last couple of years, if you've been away for these last couple months, if you've been away for these last couple weeks, testing it out, come, come and worship. Come and hear God's word. Come and just rejoice together as a community in what God has done in Jesus. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is the Sabbath. He is our rest. Keep the Sabbath day. Set it apart. See that it is holy. Because it is Christ, and Christ is for you, and Christ is your rest. Thanks be to God.